Uh, whatsoever man soweth, that also shall he reap, the scripture says. Sister, I would like us to pray quickly. Our Father, in, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. And help us to forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. How have you been finding the class so far? Any comments? Come again. How have you been finding the class so far? Uh, well, uh, for me, the, the, the classes have been so great. I'm learning a lot, <laughs> but the last assignment is very, <laughs> very challenging and exciting at the same time. Right. Anyone else want to say something about the class so far? I need to hear your feedback. Uh, on my side, the doctor, um, I think I'm, I mean, I'm enjoying the the class actually for the, I felt like it would, if it was, you know, the classes were not far apart, you know, um, the way we are really enjoying. So thank you. Thank you for, for everything. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Any other comments? You can be honest. If, you, if you're not enjoying it, you can say <laughs> And if it's too hard for you or too easy, you can say it. But I need to hear feedback. I found it challenging, yet um, I've learned a lot. It, it, it's really challenging to the mind if you if you come from some way that you never knew how to do this and you actually learn how to do it. it, it, it it's, um, it's, a, it's an amazing process to come from nothing to something. Yes, that's how I found the classes. Great. All right, thank you very much, and I appreciate it. I appreciate your comments. Um, I just wish there were more attending because, uh, frankly speaking, I am not impressed with what I'm hearing in the pulpits. You know, it, at least you hear some people saying, why don't we go to church? And I hear their comments as to why they do not want to go to church. And I, in all honesty, cannot blame those kind of people, even though we would say, no, nah, you're not going there for people. You just go there because you're going to meet the Lord. We're all wonderful. But really, in all fairness, um, a preacher must be able to deliver. Uh, if there was preaching in the pulpits today, the churches would be filled. Um, Jesus is a is the example of all examples we do know today and we can see on television um, that there are preachers who are attracting droves of crowds and the reason is because they have mastered the art of persuasion they are able to lure through persuasive uh, rhetoric um, their audiences and they're able to attract all these crowds why we are not able to attract so many in our churches is self-explanatory. If you now have come to attend some of these lessons. What I would like to attend to today, which is important, and I mean, the be, exam be, I want to before, uh, before you proceed. Sorry, sorry, Pastor. Uh, before you yes. proceed, I just want to share... Uh, a testimony uh, on what you are saying. Um, within this week, I was talking to one of uh, our Adventist sisters, and uh, she was uh, telling me that uh, she attended. She has been attending church for some time, but she has never enjoyed the sermons for a long time. And uh, the last Sabbath, she went to church. And what she did hear is about can, teaching and stories. So she yeah, she had been complaining. She she came to Hello. 
Yes, yeah, so she, she was yeah, yeah. complaining to me. Is it my problem? I have psychological problem or what? So I said, no, 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 no. So I shared with her some of the things that I've been learning here. And he said, ah, no, no. So I'm not the problem. So I said, no, totally not problem, but we don't have many preachers who are trained for this work. Many of them, yeah, yeah, they are pastors, they are theologians, but, uh, you know, preaching is a special high calling from God. And it's unfortunate that we don't have many, but God is raising an army. Uh, if you never mind, I can uh, arrange that you also attend this. Uh, you can also be a preacher. So I said, let me consider that one. So I think there's a lot of people who are looking for bread of life, but they cannot find it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Sister, you wanted to say something? Amen. Amen. Okay. I want you thank you very much. No, I, I didn't. Um, James. All right. I would like us to consider the three types of sermons or methods of preaching. There are three methods. One is expository, one is topical, and one is textual. Textual, topical, and expository. Now, the best form of preaching, what did we say? Which one, which method is the best form? Anybody? Which is it not expository um, preaching? Please continue. Uh, no, I, I just wanted to say I think um, it's uh, is it yeah the, the the is it the textual one where you say you read from the text there and you 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 stay there you know and yes you explain the text the meaning behind the text itself. Yes, expository. So that would be textual preaching. It's strange enough that most people, preachers will tell you that expository preaching is the best form of preaching, and yet they themselves don't practice that. I can honestly vouch, I cannot remember um, in the past couple of months when last I've heard an expository sermon being preached. Uh, most preachers that I listen to, they preach topical sermons and they tend to jump you know, from this to that, jumping from this text to that text. To me, the moment, the first three minutes, I already know whether I'm going to be listening to a good sermon or not. Three minutes, uh, because the ideal is that when you introduce your text, your preaching text, without you even having to announce the title of your sermon, after your preaching text, and then you start speaking, in the first three minutes, we should know what your theme is. And supposedly, we should be able to draw up a subject matter of what is your title or what is what are you talking about today. And unfortunately, because of that lack of discipline and that lack of commitment to hard work and digging and making a stay in the Word of God, and rigorously following discipline is what leads to what we have today. Seldom will you hear a proper, powerful, persuasive sermon. There may be little jokes um, that were put here and there, and people laughed, and people may feel good because you made them laugh. There may be uh, some good text that you quoted, uh, which people evoke people's uh, amens, 
uh, because the word of God is always beautiful. But that does not mean that you have preached a good sermon. Because when we do an evaluation of the sermon, then we will find that you are probably lacking and shaking in that sense. I want to encourage the habituation of expository preaching. Why expository preaching is because Jesus used expository preaching and Ellen White used expository preaching. Great preachers like uh, Gardner Taylor who was known as the dean of preachers in America. If you listen carefully following and understanding the homiletical principles, you will find that he is grounded by the basic principles or foundations of expository preaching. I will require that uh, Sister Trudy play for us a sermon uh, by firstly Dr. Jones, P.P. Jones on a dance of deceit. A dance of deceit. Can you play that sermon for us, please? And then I want you to see for yourself if they're able to uh, find some, some um, uh, principles there um, that I want you to make notes and we'll discuss. So play for us a dance of deceit, please, sister. I'm on my way doing that. Okay. Are you willing, sister? Yes, the network is just extremely slow. Please be patient with me. Okay. Excuse me. cherubs. And the earth is Father in heaven. Father in heaven, you reign high. You sit in between cherubs, and the earth is moved. Father, you are great You're above all other people, and we want to praise you. You are great, and your name is holy. And your strength and love, your judgment, is pure and exact. We exalt you. We love you. We extol you. May your unctionizing power possess us fully and completely. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. A dance of deception. The preaching text is extricated from the book of St. Mark, chapter 6, reading from verse 21 to 26. And when a convenient day was come, uh, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of the said Horadius came in and danced, and pleased Herod and them that sat with him. The king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it to thee. And he swear unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. 
And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask him? And she said, The head of the John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry, yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. In the year 1995, I took a break from my theological studies from Oakwood University in Huntsville, Alabama. After joining a tour group, uh, we visited approximately 12 countries. During the tour, I was privy to visit the Dead Sea in Jordan. I will never forget the joyous experience of swimming with friends in the Dead Sea because of the water's high content in salt, we were able to float effortlessly on the water. Albeit that, in Jordan today, at the Dead Sea Fortress, overlooking the Dead Sea is a courtyard that was uncovered at Makarus. This monumental discovery, according to experts, is a throne room where Salome danced before King Herod Antipas and his guests. Salome's dance before King Herod was a dance of deceit. A dance of deceit because Salome's mother, Herodias, purposively sent her to dance with a deceptive intent. The reason why Herodias contrived this malice is because she had a quarrel with John the Baptist, and she begrudged the Baptist for preaching compelling messages against Herod, messages which prodded his nagging conscience. Why? Because Herod went against the Mosaic law and married Herodias, his half-brother Philip Antipas' wife, Herodias aware that Herod would not consent that John be beheaded by a direct approach, foiled a stratagem whereby she would perpetually silence the condemning voice of John the Baptist. She would wait for when a convenient day would come. Our preaching text in verse 21 reads, When a convenient day was come, when a convenient day was come, uh, means that when a convenient day for Herodias to carry out her plan would come. So we notice that when Herod's birthday was come, when Herod's day that he was born and entered the world, when Herod's day of his ascension to the throne was come, um, that day would be for Herodias the convenient day that would come. When a convenient day would come, uh, Herod's, Herod's birthday becomes a convenient day for Herodias. When a convenient day was come, Herod's reasoning power is dethroned through a dance of deceit. When a convenient day was come. Herod makes a supper for his lords. He prepares a banquet, a festival, carnival uh, for his VIP guests, and among them are lords, uh, high captains, high officials, the military commanders, and chief estates of Galilee. When a convenient day was come, you can hear the seductive sounding music. You can feel the rhythmic pulse and the offbeat of syncopation. When a convenient day was come, Herodias ensures that Herod's moment of pleasure becomes Herodias' moment of valor. It is during this moment of delight, while Herod is dazed with wine, mused with music and flashing lights, while Herod is feasting, drinking, feeling inspiration and revelation, 
reeling roister, rolling and romp. It is during this convenient moment that has come that the Rodius launches an infectious strike when a convenient day was come. The ladies of the court customarily did not appear in these festivities. Yet as part of her pernicious strategic weaponry, the adulterous, unconsecrated, unforgiving and revengeful Herodias would deceitfully honor the lordly revelers with her luring daughter's dance, a dance of deceit. When a convenient day Sister. was come. Sister, Sister can you, you can hold that please? While the guests of honor are seated next to King Harry, can we still there, sister? There you go. Thank you. The um, the recording is not good. Um, uh, I think the reception is not good. Am I right? It might be the network, uh, Doctor Jones. Yeah, the network is not good. But um, I would like that they the students listen to the sermon, and then I want you to quickly now. Take note of what has been there, the ingredients, right? The anaphora, when a convenient day would come. That is taken from the text because it says Herodias would wait for when a convenient day would come. So I take that text and I use it as my or my big idea or my homiletical idea that runs through like a thread when a convenient day would come. I would like you to, as, a, as an assignment, take this, go and listen to it, and then take note of the introduction and how the text is tied to the theme and how that flows as an expository sermon where we expose the text, explaining the meaning of the text. You understand? and making a stay on the word, ensuring that all the way through, we are having what? We are having a theme that runs through, flowing through, and that, we, and that we're having a message born out of a text, not from somewhere else. The majority of the time spent is on the text itself that we are reading. When you preach or, or when you read a text in the opening, you must make a stay and spend time telling us about the text. What is that text saying? That is the word of the Lord for the day. That is the bread for what is available on the menu. Don't come and jump around and tell us this and tell us that and, and, and driving us to your agenda or your topic. Let the text speak to us. And the only way the text is going to speak to us is if you have done thorough homework where you have dug, where you have read, where you have made a stay, you've gone into the background. While you are praying and asking for God, Lord, what does this mean? Show me, speak to me, wrestle. While you wrestle with the word of God and you carry on and on, you know what? You will come back and tell us truly, thus says the Lord. And people will know that you've been, we've been with the Lord because as you speak, to us. It's not you that's speaking. It is the word of God that will be speaking to us because you will be merely an instrument that is unraveling, dishing out this word of God, the hidden treasure, which you went to go and dig and then uh, manage to refine and wash and, and cut it as it were as pieces of food and decorate it in a plate and a table and whereby we can eat and have a sumptuous meal and find it most delicious and most palatable because the preacher did his work. But there is nothing worse than a lazy preacher. I want to read you something from William Evans of what he says with regard to a lazy preacher. Uh, he says this, He's very strong. He's like me. I didn't know that William Evans says this. I actually didn't know that. I'm being honest with you. I didn't know that until when I reread. I've had this book for 20 something years, but I've, somehow I missed this. 
He says, the true preacher will have no easy time of it. Lazy men had better steer clear of the ministry. He says, lazy men had better steer clear of the ministry. It's the same as what I said in Bloemfontein years ago to call Portiers and many others, and they were upset with me. It's because I said the same thing. I didn't realize that William Evans, uh, who is a classic, says the same thing. He says, I say, those who are lazy and don't know what they're doing in the pulpit should get off. They must stay away from the pulpit. He says, lazy man had better steer clear of the ministry. He says, get away from the ministry. <laughs> you cannot be a lazy person in homiletics and preaching and want to be a minister of the gospel. You must be prepared to work hard. You know, my father discouraged me from um, being a full pastor. I asked him why. He said to me, because there is one boss you don't mess around with. And I'm paraphrasing. And he says, that is God. He says, because it's easy, you know, when you're a pastor to lazy around and think you can just dodge and do as you feel like because no one will see you. He says, but God sees you. And when you are taking money, you are earning money from a, a salary or so from. This is money from widows and orphans and uh, impoverished people. And then you don't do the work that God requires. God is very taxing. God is not like man. It is a hard thing to fall into the hand of the Lord, the Bible says. Did you hear what I said? It is a terrible thing to fall into the hand of the Lord. Google that. You'll see the text. Um, there's one person you should not play with. And I'm saying what is not favorable and many would not want to hear. And that is, if you're not prepared to work hard and to do expository sermons, expository sermons require hard work. It means you will, if you're reading, for an example, from the book of um, John, you must know that you are dealing with the Gospels and therefore read on the Gospels. If you are reading um, from the book of um, uh, Ephesians, you must know that you're dealing with the epistles and therefore you must go and read about the epistles, the background, and you must read as much as possible and read about that book's background, culture, history, things, geographical, locality. And you must saturate your mind reading the word in so much that you are full of it. And then analytically making notes, dissecting, understanding it so thoroughly that you are able to now then take a portion of text, put it in a structure, in a homiletical design and then do all those things that are necessary in order to be able to preach a powerful sermon no room for laziness in homiletics the reason why we are hearing weak sermons today is because we do not have people or preachers who are willing to invest time and study and understand what they are doing the preacher must avoid being merely theoretical he must be practical that is very important that when you as you do your sermon or prepare your sermon always try and be practical give examples if needs be uh, even if you just use as an illustration by talking about where you traveled and where you went or something about your, you and your wife or drawing from day to day. Now, the issue about expository preaching is that because it deals with staying in the word, word for word and following that, some people may find it as monotonous or boring. But a preacher who's wide awake 
does not have to make it boring because you know that you, there are two texts you must read always and that is the the bible text and the people's text so you must always be aware about what is happening around in the environment try and understand what is going on. you understand that's very important if you don't understand what is going on in the world um, you will be a non-relevant preacher but you are able to from a study of what's going on in the world and a study of god being able to marry the two and become therefore a relevant preacher a preacher for the times where people can say you know what this word was for me you need not just go and pick a topic and therefore speak on topics and find texts to support no you come from a text that is from the word of god the word speaks but then you draw or apply it to what is going on in the environment if you listen to the sermon by gardner taylor there he is sticking to the text and he speaks there about uh, paul who suffered shipwreck suffered storms and trials and so many things and then he says he lost family lost friends but he sticks to the text and then he applies it and then he applies it how does he apply it he says there some of you are constantly saying slavery has held us back he says no 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 we need to get rid of that we need to move on and he presses that he uses the text he says paul says forgetting those things that are behind i press toward the mark he is taking the text the word of god and making it relevant to the time his time he's saying no we must stop talking about slavery has held us back we need to press on and move forward and you as a preacher can do the same and say stop saying that apartheid has held us back because why today we have lots of people in the church and and around the church and outside the church people saying you know the reason why i am the way i am is because apartheid has held me behind brothers and sisters we need to move behind uh, uh, forget those things that are behind and we need to press and move forward so he's not preaching politics there no he is making the text applicable to the current times if you do not speak to the current times you are an irrelevant preacher uh, talking about things high in the sky which has nothing to do with the order of the day so you if you are all constantly studying the word of god from the word of god the word of god will speak you will be able to apply that word to our current times. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Does it make sense? Yes, it does. All right. Okay, I think we'll yes. close now. We will close now because um, of time. I think time is always an issue, but I would like you as a homework to um, to listen to those two sermons the one uh, dance of deceit and listen to the one by gardner taylor and see how the two preachers make a stay on the text expository preaching explaining the word and then applying the word but staying on to the text and not jumping around going elsewhere but sticking to that that's very important okay and then on thursday for our next uh, assignment we will be uh, dealing with the assignment that I gave you. What is what? What is the assignment, sister? For Thursday, we had to do a sermon comparison on um, Martin Luther King's and knock at midnight uh, or knock at midnight and your sermon of a friend at midnight. Doctor Jones. Yes, Doctor Jones. Sorry. All right. All right. Let's do that. If um, I would like to do those two sermons comparisons and then would like to do to comment on these two sermons, the one of today, Dance of Deceit and uh, Gardner Taylor's um, sermon on. Uh, he's uh, very speaking about mark. press toward the mark, yes. And then if there are any questions, please do not feel afraid, just ask. 
and um, we will deal with it. I would like to, um, at the later stage, once we've covered um, ex the methods of preaching, which will be expository, textual, and topical, once we've moved beyond that, I want to come to a point of showing or illustrating how we start a sermon by introduction and then make a transition to the body stuff that we have already covered, but I would like to go more into detail and then moving to conclusion and then, um, yeah, and, and then take it from there. But that is uh, where we are at now. And then I'm going to give you, a, after that, I will give you an assignment uh, where you have to prepare sermons. And once we prepare those sermons and we look at them, we'll discuss them and we will discuss each sermon publicly uh, comparatively and then I want you to then look back to the first sermon that you submitted <laughs> before you had this class and see if the Lord has blessed you thank you so much uh, ladies and gentlemen is there someone who's willing to pray for us yeah sure let us pray thank you our oh, David the father we thank you so much for the blessing that you are pouring us each and every day and uh, in a special way for having this privilege attending this class knowing how best can we reach your people at the same time reaching ourselves okay. um, as we are continuing in the crisis please dear Lord be with us give us good health okay. and also be with the uh, the rector who is doing a wonderful job, give him more wisdom and health so that he might succeed whatsoever you have entrusted him uh, on our behalf. Mm. Dear Lord, we thank you for answering our prayer. For hearing us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.